Hello everyone, welcome back to Cognosco, and today we're going to be talking about a zero-player game. Now, there's been plenty of videos on the internet about this already, but this is too cool not to touch upon on this channel. So this game was actually invented in 1970 by John Conway, an extremely famous mathematician with a lot of really interesting work. This is widely considered to be his masterpiece, although he himself doesn't believe so, and it's a simple rendering of a cellular automaton as laid out by Alan Turing, the father of modern computing. This is possibly the simplest game ever made. Now, I have my Go board here. Go is another incredible game that I plan to talk about a lot more on this channel, but this is actually how the game was originally conceived. It has a really nice vector and uniform stones that will be very useful in explaining and, and playing this game. Now, how do we have a zero-player game? How is that even possible? Well, there are only four rules in this game. It's a very simple game. So to begin, we have to understand the basic concepts behind this game. Now, in this game, there isn't really any movement. There are only two types of positions, and we have a theoretically infinite amount of cells. It doesn't really matter. And then we have organisms. Organisms are these little stones uh, I might use the words interchangeably and mess up. Just bear with me here. Each cell can either be alive or dead, off or on. Alive, dead. So all of these cells are dead. This cell is alive. This cell is alive, etc. And each cell, as you can see, has eight neighbors. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Diagonal and orthogonal. And you can easily remember this by just thinking about the movement of the king in chess. You see, this, this organism has neighbors that are all dead. So let's make a sample group of stones. We'll kind of just place them randomly everywhere. And we'll go through one game turn in this game of life, which is kind of a universal biological game that's supposed to replicate how organisms interact on a very basic level. So here we are. This is our kind of random assortment uh, of live cells that we start out with. The trouble is you need to set up the board yourself, but beyond that, it's a zero-player game. And of course, you could just randomly generate startups and it's still a zero-player game. But basically, every game term we go through and look at all of these organisms, and if any of these just four rules apply to them, that determines whether they die or survive or even grow new ones. The first rule is any stone or organism with less than two neighbors dies. Neighbors, again, are one space away, orthogonally or diagonally, the kings move. So let's see, this has two neighbors, this has two neighbors, this has one neighbor. Uh-oh, so this is going to die. So it's just going to be taken off the board. But we have to leave it on for the sake of the next step. Any cell with two or three live neighbors lives on to the next generation, so all of them uh, continue onward. And any cell with more than three live neighbors dies from overpopulation. Again, an interesting mimic of biological nature. This cell will die because it has four neighbors. So this cell and this cell will die. And then any dead cell with exactly three neighbors becomes a live cell as if by reproduction. So let's see. This dead cell will mark it with an upside down stone to differentiate it. Will be born. One will be born over here. One will be born over here. Uh, so yeah, those will be born. And then those two with one neighbor or more than three will die off. So then now we flip these over. And this is turn two. It continues onward and onward. And there's been a lot of investigation into this game. And they found a few really, really interesting things with it. So let's look into that right now. So there are some structures that will just survive no matter what forever. These are called static structures. And they've given these all really nice names based off of the shape. This is the block. Another static everlasting structure is this one, and it's called the beehive. And there are tons of different ones, very interesting stuff. And then there are also oscillators that kind of flash and make different movements. So a good example of that, or the most simple one, is called the blinker. And the death and survival of turns just switches horizontally and vertically over and over again in a cycle of death that allows it to blink. A more advanced one is called the toad, and it looks like this, and then every turn it oscillates to look like this, I believe. So that's pretty neat. And then there are fiendishly complex ones that are super long and interesting, but the most important unit that was ever discovered is called a glider. 
So a glider looks like this, and in order to achieve it, we have to set up this pattern. So specifically this one, so you'll see stuff will move around. So this moves here, this moves here, this moves here, and this moves here, like that. And then that's turn one. And then on turn two, this moves here, this disappears, and then we have one, two, and three, like that. And then it continues on to number three. This goes here, this goes here, this goes here, this goes here, and this goes here. And then it will continue moving along infinitely in one direction. And that's sort of the base unit for more complex structures, and they can get really complex. So in order to visualize one, let's take this a step up, shall we? Hello, this is one of those ginormous chess X mats that you can get for Dungeons and Dragons. It just has a ginormous grid and is great for that purpose. You can find them in any kind of game store. And we're going to attempt to construct one of the most consequential of the John Conway's Game of Life automata, the Gosper Glider Gun, which actually generates an infinite amount of those gliders. So without further ado, let's begin. Okay, so here it is, the completed Gosper glider gun. And now I'm going to zoom in so that you can better see this automata. Like that, alrighty. And now we're going to attempt to cycle through a few frames of it. Now, keep in mind this is an extremely laborious and arduous process, so I might mess up. Please tell me if I did in the comments below, but here we go. So this is the next frame, uh, and I'm going to do one more. So there you have it, the final frame. And you start to get the idea of how complex and interesting this can get. So in conclusion, this is John Conway's Game of Life. I invite you to experiment for yourself. And please post in the comments below what you've done, what you think of this. And if you want, you can even challenge me to do an algorithm on the ginormous map that I have. If you like this video, please share and subscribe and like, and I hope you have a wonderful day. Thank you.